Mercury for the New York Times. This summer I visited an illegal tin ore mine hidden deep in the equatorial forests of eastern Congo. No roads lead to the mine. The only way to get there is to walk 30 miles along a narrow, muddy footpath. When I made the trek, driving rain showers had turned the soil underfoot into a slippery sludge. At the end of the path, 10,000 people live and work in extraordinary squalor. In the makeshift village that sprang up around the mine, workers live in mud huts covered with plastic sheeting. An open-air slaughterhouse sits beside a river where workers bathe and wash their clothes. Because of the remoteness of the village and the fact that the militiamen who control the mine take a cut of every income, life here is expensive. A bowl of rice and beans costs six times what it does elsewhere in Congo. A mud hut can rent for as much as $50 a month. Up on the mountain, the search for tin ore, known as cassiterite, goes on day and night in hand-dug tunnels as deep as 600 feet. There's no electricity and few modern tools. Toxic gases accumulate underground and tunnels cave in. In the open pits, tropical downpours bring mud cascading down on workers. Soldiers are always present, ready to seize their percentage of the mine's production. Tin doesn't have the dazzle of diamonds or gold, but outside the jungle, smelters will turn these ochre-tinted bits of rock into solder that is essential for laptops and cell phones. The only way to get the ore out is the way workers came in. Porters are paid about $40 each to carry the heavy stones back to the main road. Many build rudimentary backpacks from sticks, cloth, and string. Others simply carry the 110-pound sacks on their backs, supported by slings across their foreheads. At the main road, middlemen buy the ore, as much as $100 million worth a year. It is then packed into Soviet-era cargo planes and flown to the regional capital. From there, it is shipped off to a world market hungry for tin. It is the saga of much of Africa's riches. Unearthed by the poor, controlled by the strong, and consumed by a world oblivious to its origins.